I now give the floor to Mr. Jean-Pierre Lacroix. Thank you very much, um, Madam President, um, President Juan Manuel Santos, Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to express my gratitude to the United Arab Emirates for bringing us here today to discuss climate, peace and security. I would also like to convey my thanks for the opportunity to brief. Within the past several years, most United Nations peace operations have faced a deteriorating security and political environment. Alongside other cross-border challenges, environmental degradation and extreme weather events amplified by climate change are increasingly challenging our ability to implement our mandates. Today, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, estimates that about 3.5 billion people live in climate hotspots. And climate-related peace and security risks are only set to heighten. As outlined in the sixth assessment report of the IPCC climatic and non-climatic risks, such as biodiversity loss and violent conflict, will increasingly interact. We already see a strong correlation between member states facing fragility and those facing climate change. Of the 16 countries that are the most climate vulnerable, nine of them host a UN field mission, namely the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Sudan, South Sudan, Afghanistan, Somalia, Mali, Haiti, and Yemen. It is also important to note that the majority of UN peace operations are deployed in contexts that are both highly climate exposed and characterized by high levels of gender inequality. UN field missions do not hold the ultimate solution to the global phenomenon of climate change, which must come in the form of adaptation, mitigation, and finance. But UN operations are profoundly affected by the impact of climate change. Our missions witness firsthand the dual vulnerabilities posed by climate change and insecurity. In a number of our host nations, climate change is diminishing natural resources, affecting social cohesion, driving conflict. Over the past few years, we have, for example, seen how altered mobility routes for transhumance due to changes to seasonal weather patterns exacerbate tensions and conflict between cattle herders and farmers. In Mali, this challenge negatively interacts with the high dependence on rain-fed rain agriculture that is diminished by climate change and a concurrent increased demand due to population growth. In South Sudan, eight of 10 states are affected by flooding, driving temporary and protracted displacement. This is putting different communities in close proximity and intensifying competition over resources. Flooding reduces the mobility of UN peacekeepers since they are then forced to use helicopters or boats that are in high demand and short supply. And of course, so is the case for our humanitarian colleagues. Military engineers in South Sudan are diverted to dealing with the floods and building of dikes on a full-time basis so that they can safeguard critical infrastructure such as IDP camps, on Mrs. own bases, major roads, and the airstrips. In Somalia, Years of conflict have ravaged the resilience of the state and communities. The current drought, the worst in four decades, compounds vulnerabilities and contributes to displacement, hunger, and grievance. In Iraq, water scarcity, rising temperature, and dust storms put heightened pressure on intercommunal relations. In these and many other places, the cascading effects of climate change are reshaping the parameters for our work on conflict prevention, peacemaking, peace building, and peacekeeping. Considering climate change in all that we do, as also requested by this council in a number of instances, is no longer a choice. The confluence of climate vulnerability and insecurity was also a recurring topic in global consultations on the, on the new agenda for peace, reflecting the growing importance of this topic. In our efforts to address climate change, we are seeking to mitigate security risk in tandem so that we can generate co benefits and create a more resilient future. Integrating a climate lens into peace and security efforts also means expanding and welcoming a more diverse set of decision makers. For instance, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, or UNFCCC, highlights that women's meaningful participation in decision-making around climate adaptation and natural resources leads to more sustainable and inclusive results. Across the board, 
The Departments of Peacebuilding and Political Affairs and the Department of Peace Operations strive to integrate climate considerations into our work. This was the driving ambition beh behind the creation of the Climate Security Mechanism, a joint initiative between DPPA, DPO, the UN Environmental Programme and the UN Development Programme. Since 2018, the mechanism has provided multidisciplinary support to member states, regional organizations and UN entities to better understand and address the linkages between climate, peace and security. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in line with our mandates, we have identified a number of priority areas for action in UN field missions. First, we are investing in the capacity of our peace operations to anticipate and address the linkages between climate change, peace and security. The deployment of dedicated capacity on climate, peace and security in a growing number of field missions has been a game changer. Integrating climate considerations across their work has strengthened missions' abilities to implement the mandates given by this Council. For example, in South Sudan, the UNMIS Climate Peace and Security Advisor is providing training and enhancing information sharing among the humanitarian, development and peace and security actors in South Sudan through the Climate Change Working Group. The advisor also supports government counterparts at the national, regional and community level to address climate-related security risks. This includes, for example, through working with IGAD and supporting intercommunal dialogues in flood-affected states. Innovation and that data analytics represent a key area for capacity building that can be brought forward by clim climate, peace and security advisors in our field missions. With the help of innovation partners, we are beginning to use satellite imagery and machine learning to better understand climate trends and boost early warning capacity. Better capacity to collect, utilize, and analyze data will also help us strengthen our understanding of the ways in which climate change impacts peace and security, as well as the good practices emerging to manage these risks. Second, we are reinforcing the mutual benefits of climate action and our work on peace and security. Peacemaking is an area that demands climate sensitive approaches. Technical cooperation can open new entry points for dialogue, confidence building amongst parties, and help to ensure the longer term viability of peace agreements. The DPPA practice note on climate informed mediation published last year provides guidance in this area. Climate-informed peacebuilding also offers the potential for complementary benefits. Climate action and peacebuilding share many of the same objectives, namely resilient, just and inclusive societies. Coordinated engagement in both areas can advance multiple objectives simultaneously. This was confirmed by the sixth assessment report of the IPCC, which highlighted that climate-sensitive peacebuilding and gender-sensitive approaches offer potential new avenues to build peace. Yet, the capacities of women to address climate impacts and drive peace building are still underexplored, even though their roles in water and food provision uniquely position them as agents of change. The Secretary General's Peace Building Fund plays an important catalytic role in this regard. In Yemen, for instance, where water scarcity worsened by climate change is a destabilizing factor, the fund has helped strengthen local water governance structures in the, in the valley of Wadi Rima. By taking an innovative approach to women's inclusion in local water management and dispute resolution, the project was able to increase natural resource access and reduce intercommunal tensions. Overall, since 2018, tw sorry, tw since 2017, the fund has invested in more than 70 climate-informed peacebuilding projects implemented by 21 different entities around the world, particularly in West Africa and the Sahel. Over the past five years, seven out of the 10 countries most vulnerable to climate change have been the beneficiaries of peace building fund projects. A recently concluded review of climate related projects, which was supported by the fund has helped us to identify areas for further strengthening. One of its key findings was the importance of flexible cross-border approaches that invest in peace building and conflict sensitive climate action. More coherence between climate action, peace and security is not only a policy imperative, it also makes economic sense. Aligning peace building and climate finance mechanisms, both UN and non-UN, would allow us to optimize systems to utilize limited resources in more efficient and impactful ways. Third, 
As the UN works to more proactively mitigate climate change, it is increasingly imperative that we not be another cause. We are therefore working to reduce our environmental footprint, including through improved transitions to energy, to energy efficiency and a greater reliance on renewable energy. Today, the largest UN peacekeeping operations rely almost exclusively on generators using expensive imported diesel that requires transportation under often very dangerous conditions. In certain settings, these missions are amongst the largest single sources of energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions in their host countries. On the other hand, many of the host countries are among the least electrified in the world, with community having some of the highest energy costs in the world. Even though renewable, renewable energy is often a cheaper power source under these circumstances, host states and host communities rarely benefit from climate and renewable energy investments. In 2021-2022, 6% of the electricity used by UN peace operations was generated from renewable energy sources. Guided by the environmental, environmental strategy for peace operation, the UN is progressively introducing renewable energy solutions, reducing our environmental footprint while also minimizing the security risk for fuel convoys. In this regard, we welcome the very promising partnership between the United States and Nepal to deploy a large-scale solar hybrid system in Rumbek, South Sudan. With support from the Department of Operational Support, peace operations are now considering ways in which their own energy needs, their footprint and infrastructure investments can positively contribute to the efforts of host states to improve access to clean energy. UN peace operations in Mali and Somalia are also utilizing innovative renewable energy sourcing approaches through partnerships with our host nations and the private sector. To secure similar opportunities across other mission sites, it is critical to get support from the host state governments, private sector companies, and development actors. We thank the United Arab Emirates and Norway for launching the Energy Compact in Peace Operations, which is an important vehicle to bring the right partners together. The compact aims to reduce operational costs, security risks, and greenhouse gas emissions for peacekeeping missions while leaving a positive infrastructure legacy for host communities. The 2023 UN peacekeeping ministerial meeting taking place in Ghana in December this year will provide additional opportunities to strengthen UN peace operation through the generation of pledges that meet UN needs, whether specialized capabilities or new or expanded capacity building, training, and equipping partnership in key areas, including that of the environment. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, given the growing linkages of climate change, peace and security, as well as the broader changes to the conflict dynamics in the areas in which we work, we must continue to adapt to climate change. Together, we can build a future where our efforts in conflict prevention, peace building, peacemaking, and peacekeeping reinforce and are complemented by our commitment to addressing the climate crisis. Thank you. I thank Mr. Lacroix for his brief.